was raised in a family of gorillas. One of his best friends was an elephant. His home was in the jungle, and yet he was as human as you are. His name was Tarzan, and to play his story right now, press the flashing forward button. You can move through the story by using the forward and back buttons. You can switch between playing the story or reading it yourself by clicking the mode button. Click the pause button to make the story pause or run. You can choose which scene to play by using the scene selector. You can quit at any time by pressing the quit button. So press the flashing forward button and let's begin now. One stormy night off the coast of Africa, a ship caught fire and started to sink. A man on the ship lowered a lifeboat holding his wife and baby boy. Then he jumped into the water. He swam to the lifeboat, took the oars, and began rowing. When the man and his family reached land the next morning, they found a dense jungle. They picked out a large tree where they could live and began building a home. Deep within the jungle lived another family. It was a group of apes, watched over and protected by their leader, Kerchak. The two families didn't know it, but one day they would have something in common. Like the human parents, Kerchak and his mate Kala loved their own child and spent many happy hours playing with him. But one night, the little ape wandered away and was carried off by Sabor, the leopard. Kala was heartbroken. Then one day she heard a strange crying sound. She followed the sound to the treehouse built by the humans and cautiously went inside. There was broken furniture everywhere and the paw prints of a leopard. A blanket lay nearby and beneath it was a baby boy. Curious, Kala lifted the baby into her arms. The child nestled against her. Just then, something above her moved. It was Sabor. Kala ran, protecting the baby, but Sabor caught up. As they fought, the baby slipped from Kala's arms and landed in a net. Sabor leaped after him, but when the leopard landed, the baby bounced back up. Kala snagged him by the diver and scurried off into the jungle. Kala found Kerchak and showed him the baby. Kerchak shook his head. It's not our kind. No, you have to take it back. Sabor killed his family. There are no others. Then you may keep him. Kerchak, I know he'll be a good son. I said he could stay. That doesn't make him my son. Kala named the baby Tarzan. When Tarzan grew old enough, he wanted to play with the other young apes, but he had trouble keeping up with them. One day, near Elephant Falls, a young ape named Turk tried to discourage Tarzan by giving him an impossible task. Well, you gotta 
Uh, you gotta go get a half. An elephant half. Much to Turk's surprise, Tarzan raced over the cliff and leaped into the water where the elephants were bathing. A nervous young elephant named Tantor saw Tarzan swimming toward them. Panicked, the elephant stampeded, thundering madly past Turk and heading straight for Kerchak, Kala, and the other apes. The apes scrambled out of the way, except for one baby. Kerchak, moving with lightning speed, grabbed the little ape out of the elephant's path. Meanwhile, Turk pulled Tarzan from the water. Tarzan, buddy! Don't die on me! You weren't supposed to do it! Kerchak came hurrying up to Tarzan. You almost killed someone. I'm sorry, Kerchak. Kala moved between them. He's only a child. That's no excuse, Kala. You can't keep defending him. He will never be one of us. Hurt by Kerchak's words, Tarzan ran off into the jungle. Kala found Tarzan by a jungle pool, gazing at his own reflection. Why am I so different? She sat down beside him. Never mind what Kerchak said. But look at me! Kala took one of Tarzan's hands and placed it against his chest. What do you feel? My heart. Then she pressed his ear to her own heart. See? We're exactly the same. Kerchak just can't see that. Tarzan snuggled close to her. I'll make them see it. I'll be the best ape ever. As the years passed, Tarzan grew strong and learned many skills by watching all the creatures in the jungle. Turk and Tantor grew with him, and the three became friends. One day, Tarzan and Turk were wrestling playfully when an old enemy leaped from the bushes. It was Sabor, the leopard. Kerchak rushed in to protect his family. Sabor lashed out with her claws, knocking Kerchak to the ground. As she closed in for the kill, Tarzan swung down, holding a spear. Sabor smashed it and leaped for Tarzan. They fell into a pit. A moment later, Sabor rose from the pit, but not on her own. It was Tarzan lifting her lifeless body above his head. As he yelled in triumph, the apes cheered. To show his respect, Tarzan laid Sabor at Kerchak's feet. But before Kerchak could speak, shots rang out. Tarzan turned. What was that? Kerchak looked around. Everyone, let's move. He led the others deeper into the jungle, but Tarzan was curious. Climbing into a tree, he saw a group of strange creatures, two of them men and one a young woman. The woman's name was Jane. She turned to the man with a gun. Ah, uh, Mr. Clayton, sorry, excuse me. Uh, but my father and I came on this expedition to study gorillas, and I believe your shooting might be scaring them off. As Jane turned to go, a baby baboon ran out from behind a tree. Wow. Are you what all the fuss was about? Jane reached for her sketchbook and began drawing the little animal. 
You may not be a gorilla, but you are one sweet little... <gasps> the baboon snatched her book and disappeared oh. into the jungle. Jane followed. She scolded the baby baboon and suddenly found herself surrounded by hundreds of angry baboons. As she tried to run away, the baboons charged. Tarzan swung down on a vine and lifted Jane into the air. Jane looked at the ground and gasped. Oh, oh, I'm flying. <gasps> After a scary chase, they finally escaped to a nearby tree. Tarzan set her down, and Jane began backing up. Don't come any closer. Please, don't. She tried to push him away, but he caught her hand. Oh. Comparing his own hand to hers, he was amazed to see they were alike. Then, Tarzan tried the most important test. He listened to her heartbeat. Then he brought her head to his chest, so she could hear his heartbeat. <laughs> yes, thank you. It's a lovely heartbeat. It's very nice. Smiling, he pointed to himself. Tarzan. Tarzan. Oh, I see. I'm Jane. Tarzan gently touched her cheek. Jane. Not far away, Turk, Tantor, and some friends stumbled onto the human's camp. Turk found a typewriter and pounded on it. One of her friends began dropping dishes, and the others joined in the fun. When Tarzan brought Jane back to the camp, she gasped. <gasps> Gorillas! Then Turk greeted Tarzan, and Jane made another discovery. He's one of them. Just then, there was a snorting sound behind her. Jane turned and saw Kerchak. <gasps> My... <laughs> the huge ape pounded his chest, and Jane dropped to the ground. Kerchak motioned to the other apes, and they headed back into the jungle. Not far away, a voice called out. Jane! Jane, where are you? Jane! Kala came over to Tarzan and led him away. Seconds later, Clayton and Professor Porter arrived. Jane got excited. Daddy, I was walking. I was... There's an army of monkeys, a huge tree full of them. Suddenly, I was swinging in the vines up in the air. I was saved by a flying wild man in a loincloth. Oh, and there were gorillas. He left with them. Professor Porter stared at her. Who, dear, who? Tarzan. The ape man. Kerchak, meanwhile, spoke to the ape family. We will avoid the strangers. Do not let them see you and do not seek them out. They mean us no harm, Kerchak. Kala gripped his arm. Tarzan, for once, listen to Kerchak. Tarzan glared at her. Why didn't you tell me there were creatures that looked like me? Kerchak watched as Tarzan stalked off into the jungle. A short time later, Tarzan appeared at the human's camp. Professor Porter stared in amazement. <laughs> Tarzan! <laughs> Clayton stepped forward. Where are the gorillas? Gorillas! <laughs> Jane shook her head. Shouting won't help, Mr. Clayton. He doesn't understand English. <laughs> I think I'll take it from here. Over the next few weeks, 
Jane taught Tarzan about the outside world, and he showed her the wonders of the jungle. Tantor and Turk watched Tarzan come and go from the human's camp. Ah, oh, Turk, I've never seen him so happy. Eh, I give it a week. But Tarzan didn't have a week. The ship that had brought Jane and the others to Africa had returned to take them back to England. Jane didn't want to leave without learning more about the gorillas. Neither did Clayton, who was mad at her. This is your fault. I should have followed my instincts and set traps for the beasts. When Tarzan arrived, Jane explained about the ship and asked him to go home with them. But Tarzan had a different idea. Jane must stay with Tarzan. Jane stared at him. No, I can't stay. Look, I've got... I... I with my father and... But I, I can't. <laughs> Crying, she turned and ran away. Clayton walked over to Tarzan. If only she could have spent more time with the gorillas. Tarzan stared at him. Clayton, if Jane sees gorillas, she stays? Clayton smiled, and Tarzan went racing off into the jungle. There he found Turk and explained his plan. All you have to do is get Kerchak out of the way. Turk, I'm asking you as a friend. But don't make me do anything embarrassing. Turk and Tantor dressed up like humans. When Kerchak spotted them, he chased them away from the gorilla's nesting area. With Kerchak out of the way, Tarzan led the humans deep into the jungle. There they found Kala. Jane whispered to Tarzan. She's beautiful. She's my mother. Kala hid behind the trees. When Clayton started to follow, Jane stopped him. Clayton, no! You'll only frighten her more. Instead, Jane made some ape noises. Gorillas started to appear from their hiding places. Jane was delighted when some babies came up to her. One of the babies playfully grabbed Clayton's gun. Just then, Turk and Tantor came crashing through the clearing. Right behind them was Kerchak. He was mad. Tarzan watched as Kerchak attacked Clayton, knocking the gun away and pinning him to the ground. Tarzan pulled Kerchak off just long enough to let Clayton scramble to his feet. Tarzan yelled to the humans. Go now! Professor Porter turned to his daughter. Jane, quickly! Hurry! Come on! They raced off with Kerchak roaring. When they were gone, Tarzan let go of the ape leader. Kerchak, I didn't... I'm sorry, I... I asked you to protect our family, and you betrayed us all. Ashamed, Tarzan ran away from the shocked apes. Kala followed Tarzan and spoke gently to him. Come with me. There's something I should have shown you long ago. She took him to the treehouse where she had found him. There, he saw an old picture. Is this me? And this is my father. And... And my... Now you know. Tarzan, I just want you to be happy, whatever you decide. She left him alone in the house. When he came out, he wore his father's clothes. Kala cried because she knew he had decided to leave. Tarzan put her hand on his chest. No matter where I go, you will always be my mother. Kala hugged him. And you will always.
always be in my heart. The next day, Turk watched as Tarzan was rowed out to the ship. She turned to Tantor. We're too late. I can't believe it. We didn't get to say goodbye. But when Tarzan followed Jane and her father on board the ship, the crew grabbed them and tied them up. There had been a revolt, and Clayton was the new leader. He and his men were going to capture Tarzan's ape family and carry them off in cages. When Tarzan asked why, Clayton laughed. <laughs> why? For 300 pounds sterling a head. Actually, I have you to thank, my boy. Couldn't have done it without you. Tarzan knew he had made a mistake. Back on land, Tantor heard his cry. That, that sounded like Tarzan. Turk wasn't interested. Yeah, well, why doesn't he get his new friends to help him? I don't care. Tarzan needs us, and we're gonna help him! You got that? They swam to the ship, where Tarzan and his friends were locked up below deck. Turk and Tantor fought off the crew, broke through the deck, and release the prisoners. Thanks, guys. Tarzan dived into the water. Back in the jungle, Clayton and his men had rounded up the apes and were about to shoot Kerchak when a cry echoed through the trees. It was Tarzan, Jane, Professor Porter, and an army of jungle creatures. Tarzan knocked Clayton out of the way. Kerchak gazed at Tarzan. You came back. I came home. Fighting side by side, Humans and animals freed the gorillas. As Jane opened Kala's cage, a shot rang out. Tarzan fell to the ground, holding his arm. Out of the bushes stepped Clayton. He raised his gun to finish off Tarzan. But Kerchak leaped in front of him, stopping the bullet. Clayton reloaded and chased Tarzan up into the trees, where the two men faced off. Tarzan wrestled away the gun and broke it into pieces. Then Clayton drew his machete and went after Tarzan. But Clayton got caught in some vines. He hacked at them madly. A moment later, Clayton fell to his death. Tarzan hurried back to Kerchak and knelt beside him. Kerchak, forgive me. No, forgive me for not understanding that you have always been one of us. Our family will look to you now. Take care of them. My son, Kerchak's eyes closed. The next day, Tarzan, Turk, and Tantor watched from shore as Jane and her father were rowed toward the waiting ship. Professor Porter shook his head. Jane, dear, I can't help feeling that you should stay. Daddy, please don't. We've been through all of this. I couldn't possibly... St I, I belong in England, and with you, with people, when... But you love him. Go on. Jane hugged her father and jumped into the water. Then her father jumped in, too. 
When they reached land, Jane fell into Tarzan's arms and kissed him. Kala took Jane's hand and welcomed her home, the home where Tarzan knew he belonged. If you really want to quit, click on the picture of Clayton. To play the story again, click on the picture of Turk. Click on Tantor to sample more CD read-alongs and other products from Walt Disney Records at Disney.com.